السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ دس از فرام ہیلپ می سعیدی آئی ہیو سفرڈ فرام سوشل اینگزائٹی اینڈ اسٹرگل بینگ انگیج فار لانگ پیریڈس اینڈ کانورسیشن ود پیپل اسپیشلی ان اے گروپ سیٹنگ وی ایم ایکسپیکٹڈ ٹو بی دا سینٹر آف اٹینشن وی ٹاک اباؤٹ مائی سیلف کازز می پیلپیٹیشنس آئی پری سلا ریمین ان ودو اینڈ ریڈ سلاوات ویئر دا تاویز اینڈ مائی فیروز رنگ What can I do to eliminate this anxiety? It really affects my life. If you're making the connection and you're making all of these spiritual practice and you're required to be the center of attention, then it could be an anxiety that not only from yourself but that you pick up the subtle energies of other people. And that's why then you have to train with the madad and the connection, make a strong connection with the shaykhs that you have a strong presence because again once we do our spiritual practices and the heart becomes something subtle, it also picks up all of the, the energies of an audience of, of a group of people or an environment. And they can be nervous, they can be angry, they can have all sorts of different temperaments And imagine then the heart is picking up these types of signals. So that, that can be, you know, a very distracting energy. So anytime the shaykhs speak it's going to be based on the people whom are watching, the people whom are present because of the energies that they're putting within their heart. So if you go somewhere let's say there's a hostile audience it's very difficult to speak and many times that there won't be any speech because the energy of the people is just not correct. So that, that's a part of the sort of energy training. But when we do our practices, we keep our wudu, we do the salah, we have our taweez and, and you're doing the muraqabah, you're doing all of these things and you enter into an environment and there's an, an anxiety and a, a movement or palpitation in the heart, it's not necessarily from ourselves because the heart is a reflective tool, it reflects what's around in its environment. When it's been fine-tuned and cleaned or even in the process of cleaning it picks up the energies of everything around it. So I say if somebody's anxious you feel an anxious energy but you're not anxious. You feel somebody's angry you feel an anger but you're not angry. You go into an area and you feel like depressed but I wasn't depressed few minutes ago because it's not your energy. So we have to think of energy like a shirt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, there's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. You're wearing a nice shirt, you're going out, all of a sudden somebody threw a different shirt onto you and it looks all dirty and different. And the energy has that ability. So that's again a part of the training and that's why it's necessary to have a strong connection with the shaykhs so that you can reflect and say that this is not me being nervous because I know the subject I'm supposed to cover but this is just the energy in the room is, is, is off or something has happened. Like with depression, you go somewhere all of a sudden you feel depressed but you weren't depressed because somebody's energy got thrown on to that person. And you know from whatever Allah wants the person to carry or, or they just went into an environment that's uh, above their ability to carry, means then you make your istighfar, you make your salawats at that event and you try to take that energy to be sort of washed away from you. With istighfar you can make salawats right before you're talking, it's istighfar during the, the event before you speak. So there's many different practices that people can do. And if it's just too overwhelming, stop speaking. Go into something else that doesn't require you to do public speaking or speaking at a location. Many people now prefer to speak through Zoom or through 
media instead of going in person and being surrounded by people. So there's many different things that one can do if, if they did all the spiritual work and still it has a, a too strong an effect then one should isolate themselves or you know something different in a different field or different means of communicating to people inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, my mom is showing signs of dementia. She's very forgetful, keeps repeating the same conversations, losing and forgetting where she has put things. She's very emotional and gets anxious. Is there anything she can read, recite to help with her memory so it, it improves? Your advice will be really appreciated. Sure, it's a part of the, the, the aging process and as much as they can make salawat on Prophet InshaAllah and as much as you can make du'a on them, that make du'a for them and uh, make du'a for people whom are, are suffering from these difficulties. And if they can make their salawats and the nasheeds and, and have that love uh, for Prophet so that to help them through this uh, fluctuation of energy at this age in which the brain is, is, is struggling to, to receive the, the energy and the insight versus the heart and if the person hasn't trained with their heart then it becomes difficult in the ages that are older because they keep trying to remember. Remember that the, in their life they spent all their time memorizing everything and then speaking from what they remembered. And as that faculty is shutting down by the process of aging they were never really using the heart for inspiration, they were using everything they had memorized. And now those cells are easy, are harder to locate. You know like the Google in their head it's, it's not picking up where that file is, what was that memory, what was that name. But that which is in the heart is, is not using that power. From the heart it immediately just reflects to the head and comes out. It's not something that they have to retrieve through a, a memory or, or, or I guess for computers people would understand, it's not in a chip or in a memory board somewhere on their head that they're trying to retrieve that understanding. The heart has an ability to cast its knowledge and use the faculty of the mouth and the eyes of that human. But those whom didn't train in that then the process becomes more and more difficult as they're getting older, they become angry because they can't remember. So these are just the conditions of what we call aging. You can make salawats on them, they can make salawats, you can make du'a for them that Allah increase the energy within their heart to compensate for what's happening within their head, inshaAllah. Uh, dear respected shaykh, uh, have a question for you related to a TikTok post. How and where you get that information about supernatural beings of that sort? For me, they are Arabian fairy tale stories created to entertainment and inspire terror in the innocent and illiterates. The ifrit are real and how can I confirm presence or infestation? Any reference books for research with qualify and reliable sources? Sincerely. <laughs> yeah, that's all of Islam. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's that, I don't know if you're coming from an Islamic background but that's all Islamic background. So the, the research that you ask of us is basically we teach, you like the teaching alhamdulillah like a restaurant, you don't like it go to the next one. But for us to provide you like a, like a skip the dishes or a DoorDash that I want these books please send them to me and references please send them to me, that's not our job. So anyone who wants to learn a subject, mashaAllah gave Google. So you type with your fingers on Google that what uh, Prophet ﷺ's hadith on jinn, what is the hadith of unseen and the whole Islamic reference library of the world will begin to pop up onto you. And Islamic uh, understanding is deep in the understanding of unseen, the ifrit, the shayateen and the jinn. And that's how they illuminated the earth and <clears throat> they are the flag bearers of light upon this earth. Shaitan's biggest trick is that he made the people to forget him and think he doesn't exist except for Islam. And that's why it's the illumination of this world and that's why it's the only religion on this world. Every other religion has left their religion. 
they've, they've put their flag down and they've allowed everything to transpire within their faith. And why Islam shines is that it keeps shining a light on them, say, oh no, no, this is a shaitan, this one is a jinn, this is like this. Don't listen to these things, don't listen to these sicknesses, don't listen to all of these events that are happening. These are energies and our dimensions are filled with these, these energies. So the knowledge of them is in illumination. Most of what people call fairy tales are, are based in a reality. There was a time in which these things were seen and people dealt with them. As we get closer towards the end <coughs> that's the great test. They become unseen but everybody affected by them because if they be seen then the state of death that's coming, the state of a great deceit that's coming could not take place. It's only taking place because of the immense amount of corruption as a result of not seeing these creatures but people following them and falling into their traps. As a result of the hikmah of veiling them but allowing them to move, you bring about a great darkness upon the earth because this is the phase of death for the earth, that everything has a life and a death. And what happens within your body in your death phase is what? When once in your life you were active and running, as soon as you've seen somebody who's in the process of dying. They shut down, they actually don't move, they stop to eat and one by one their organs are dying as the phase of life is leaving them. And the, the smell of death is coming out from them until Allah calls their soul back into the Divinely Presence. This earth is on that phase, it's not in its highlight, it's not in its vibrant running and jogging and everything is prospering. Everything in some place is dying and being destroyed. And it's exactly like a corpse that is now going into stages of its difficulties. So as a result this is then the days of, of difficulty. So it's important to believe in things other than what you see and that was the whole talk last night. Anybody who activates their heart will know all of these things. You can reference it in, in books but the books you know you don't need. You can open your heart, meditate, contemplate, immediately you'll feel energies. Connect with the shaykhs you'll feel heavenly energies. As a result of training with the shaykhs your heart becomes sensitive and as you become more sensitive you'll feel all that negative energies. And that's what's important, that's why all the teaching is not based on heads. We're not a, a head person here, we're not talking from head and and uh, like a professor at a university, we actually have a curriculum in which to train people to operate through their heart and start opening the heart so you can witness what we're teaching and you can experience what's being taught, inshaAllah. Uh, <clears throat> as salaamu alaykum respected Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa can you please share what's the reality, reality of hypnotherapy? Please forgive me for my bad adab. The reality of what? Hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy? Hypnosis? Yes. The reality is that you're, you're breaking your awzu. Anytime you, you, you know Allah gave to us is, don't fight shaitan. Allah's rahmah and mercy for us was, don't, don't fight shaitan but actually seek refuge in me from shaitan because I'll beat him up for you. But people whom break that covenant they risk different dangers. So one of the understandings of awzu is, don't let anybody to enter into your mind and to try to overtake your mind and your capacity. Because it could be good and it could be bad but you open a door into your head and as a result now you know many things can happen. So there are people who take these books, read these books and basically said, are you accepting? So you know you, you've broken the awzu and then they become very malleable. I want you to feel this, I want you to feel your eyes are heavy, I want you… and they start talking to you that you have to accept what they're saying and as a result 
you're being conditioned by them to accept what they're saying, feel what they're saying and they can enter into then your, your data code in your mind. They can either plant a thought, a memory and plant a situation or try to get you to forget a situation. But either way those are a dangerous field in your computer system for allowing anyone in. It's like somebody have… if you have like all sensitive information on your computer and somebody says, do you mind if I come on your keyboards and I just sort of program something on your software? And it's like, why would you do that? How do I know if you're programming something that everything I type it sends you an email of my codes? I don't know what you put into my computer because I don't know the degree of what you're trying to do. So as a result Allah said, I was a bit uh, just, you just stay away from these types of things. And that, that's probably the safer realm since we can't sort of verify everybody's intention and what they're going to do when they come into your mind. Then there are many case studies for anyone again who wants to Google that, that people went in and suggestions and thoughts were planted into them and then they can't now understand what's their memory, what's their experience versus what was put into their memory and to their thought process. And uh, again this is all a part of a magic show that comes upon this, this earth. So if anyone's seen these TV shows, these are magicians that do this and they're called mentalists. And they come out and do mass hypnosis on an audience and they suggest and they all, all sorts of tricks that they have on how to manipulate people. And many times in school they try to find which students are malleable. So in upper high school and entry into college and especially if you're taking degrees within psychology and some of the advanced courses can be very dangerous is that when they start to do experiments and tests in a group and they say, okay we're gonna give this suggestion and who's like this and who's like… they run through a series of tests to see out of the room, who in the room is a very malleable person, someone that we can mold the way we want and usually those are the ones that they isolate for something else. And the other ones whom they say, I want you to think like this, I want you to do like this, I want you to raise your hand, do you feel your hand like this and the one who's like, no I don't really care for anything that you're saying, they put those aside so we don't want to deal with those. So there's also always a danger of, of being the most malleable, the most easily molded person because again for nefarious reasons people may be trying to find out or isolate those types of people. So Islam comes and teaches us that to focus on Allah and don't let anybody enter into the mind and, and don't let anybody to overtake the person. And our life is about submitting to Allah and we make sujood and we, we, we devote our entire being to the worshipness of Allah and under the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad So if, if they don't look like Sayyidina Muhammad and they're not having to do anything with that reality, I wouldn't let him into your heart or your head. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi we're seeing all over social media that some animals, sheep, goats, they're making tawaf all around the world. Can you speak about that? Yeah we, ha we have a video. Our guys quickly grabbed some videos and put it out and we've talked about the tawaf. Again now alhamdulillah Allah is showing all these western people that, uh, what's this though, look at them, they're like those people in Mecca going around the, the black house. And that, that's you know because Allah is sending a sign upon this earth that everything should uh, regain its, its compass. And the whole reality of tawaf, we said before, some people tawaf their car. It's all they're focused on is their car, their money, their bank account and this is their tawaf. Because whatever you circumambulate is your focus in life, that's it, that's your entire focus. Why Allah wanted us to ta make tawaf around a house of prayer? Not to get Allah's in the house but it was to focus on Allah, focus on our house of worship, focus that Allah is the center of our life and our body must be following our heart, right? But the dunya they want everybody to shut their heart off and circumambulate something else. 
So when we circumambulate, we have to circumambulate the heart, we have to move and, and uh, move around the heart because the heart is symbolic of that. So even when we're there we're circumambulating our heart. Why? Because Allah wants us to focus is your heart. I can only be contained in your heart. If you wash your heart, clean your heart, purify your heart, you'll find my light within your heart. That's why we say, we say that the shaykhs they're a qibla and a Kaaba and they're walking everywhere. Why? Because Allah made their heart but the Kaaba people made with their hands. And if their heart is filled with the love of Allah, love of Sayyidina Muhammad of course it's a Qibla. Means what? The Qibla is a place in which you'll find your direction and your coordinates. That when you're with them and around their orbit you're finding Allah you're falling in love with Allah You find the love of Sayyidina Muhammad You've regained your, your connection and your focus in life when you're in the orbit of a shaykh that you're, you're logging in Thursday, Friday, Saturday night and instead of focusing on, on, on forbidden places people go in their life, it's bringing into his gravitational pull. And as you come into his gravitational pull then now you're coming in and now you're focusing on what he's focusing on. And he focuses on the love of Allah and the love of Prophet So you see the students or in the orbit of the shaykh that if his juzbah is strong enough from wherever they are in the world they'll be pulled into that orbit and as a result they're circumambulating. And we said before that, look to the charity programs we've done. Go to the Muslim charity and look at the, the semi-annual report that we put out. And, and tell yourself, it doesn't matter what I tell anyone because they say, well he's, he's biased to his own teaching. But look that the, this love and this ishq it's power. This focus on the love of Prophet brought these people into this orbit. And these people, what are they accomplishing? How many thousands of pounds of food that these inspired ashiqeen give out? in the last year. We're all the tariqahs that talk so much about who's this, who's that, how big they are, how great they are, is the proof has to be in your actions, not in your words, not in you know the coats that you went in you took from your own closet and said, now I wear this coat and I'm the king of all kings. But it has to be in the actions you did. So if the action was good, so look at the orbit of this shaykh, his students actually go out and they gave out hundreds of thousands of pounds of food, rescued hundreds of thousands of pounds of food, gave out thousands of meals, gave out a thousand well, water wells, gave all of these acts, not from me but all these students who are inspired within that orbit, their love and their ishq and their yearning to please Prophet So the proof is always in the pudding. The proof is in what's manifesting, not what people sit and talk and oh, I'm this, I'm that, who cares what people say but look at the actions of the people. They're going out and they're all inspired to do all these great things, that's the, that's the reality. So then Allah is now calling all of humanity back to look, look so that they can research, say, so what is this tawaf, what is this sir, circumambulating? And this was uh, again a sign for people that something's happening on this earth, these, these things are opening fast on this earth, calling people back, back to the focus of God, back to the focus of the Creator and that that which you're, you're, you're occupying your heart with may be of no relevance, come back to the Divinely Presence. So many, many signs will begin to open onto this earth. And uh, that's why it's so important for people to use their heart and not their head because those whom are looking from their head they're going to see miracles but it's not going to be heavenly miracles. They're going to hear miracles and those are not heavenly miracles. And if they took their life from their head, good God Allah save them because they're going to fall into the traps of deceit and deception. But if they trained and that's why you see that when we keep saying that Dajjal is on this earth, things have now opened 
if you're not training with your heart then how can you be from Surat Al-Kahf? How could you be from the reality of Ashab Al-Kahf when everything is going to fall into what they worship? And that's the Ashab Al-Kahf is that they ran, they said that if we stay here we're going to fall into what this oppressor wants from us. And the Ashab Al-Kahf are the ones whom they went and took refuge in the cave of Divine Realities from the oppression that opening upon this earth. So it has the immense reality to open the heart, open the heart. That's why Allah sending all these signs, look at these people. They're able to accomplish all of these things for the love of Prophet Which tariqah is doing that? If they're doing that, alhamdulillah. Then Allah give everybody more strength to do that. But everybody want to sit around on a couch and say bad things and do nothing? Or look at how these people are inspired. They feel the love, they, they, they actually look the love, they're following Mawlana Shaykh's request that they all have turbans, they have their beards, they have their nalains, they have everything, rings, their canes. And then they go out and feed people, give water to people, help the orphans, rescue thousands of pounds of food. So alhamdulillah what could be better than that? What do people want to do? They just want to make complaints and do nothing and sit on a couch? That food that you gave and that food that you rescued, <coughs> how will it save you from a day of hunger one day when there is no food to eat and there's no difficult, there's no water to drink? Whether it's on this earth, God forbid that we see the difficulty or the people on Yawmul Mashar when they have a tremendous fear, tremendous difficulty and Allah reminds, I'm the greatest of those who keep a hisab. I know what food you gave, I know what things that you did, I know what kind of water you gave out. This is a day in which you will be repaid for those deeds. So means this is tariqah, tariqah is not just people you know making claims of grandeur but it's to actually do the teaching, put the teaching into effect and that our faith in action. And as a result if it's true and it's loving go out and do something, just sit there and, and and talk about realities for what? Take the reality within ourselves and now go out and make Sayyidina Muhammad to be happy. And that was the reality of tariqahs. Tariqahs are immensely powerful, especially in very bad times. The tariqahs they don't fold, they don't hide, they're very strong and what the light they come out with is going to astonish people. But for right now it's good deeds, food and water is most important inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, are memories stored in the heart and mind? And if we have pain stored in our heart, how do we clear it from our hearts? Interesting. That which is related to your soul is stored within the heart. So the, the knowledge is that Allah because the soul its house is the heart, not the head. That's why when you watch these sci-fi movies they got it all wrong because they don't want to talk about a heart because Dajjal has no access, he has hayat dunya he has no hayat of akhirah. So he's not going to put in any of his movies about a soul. So they're going to negate the soul and all their tech movies are going to show that your memories are all here and we're going to put a chip and we're going to take all of your memories and we're going to put it into a, another creature. And that way we transferred your consciousness into this creature. I mean, your consciousness is not in your head, it's a zombie apocalypse. They're going to make zombies, you know, organic robots we talked about. They're going to make things that look like people, they're not people, they're organic robots, they have no soul. They have a, 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 pro a programmed AI that sounds like you, right? They didn't transfer any consciousness. When Dajjal comes and starts talking about we can transfer your consciousness into another body. It's not a body, it's an organic robot that they already have that understanding and technology. The jinn have that. So there's a master jinn and he has other organic beings around him, there are his peripherals, right? So same in computing, 
you're at your computer and you control the printer, it's a peripheral. It's linked to you and you have control over it. So you have a printer, let's say you have five printers as dummy jinn beings around you. These five printers you can send to all of them through your central system. Their understanding and how they operate, there is one jinn in the master one controlling 50 different organic beings that are walking with them. But there's one that has actual system within it, uh, energy within it and the other ones are organic beings that they created. Now for dunya they want to do that and they want to bring organic beings and say, we're going to transfer your consciousness into that being. No, they didn't transfer any consciousness. Your consciousness does not lie and reside within the head. It resides within the soul on an encrypted file in which they have no access to. But what they can do is that they can send your sound file, video file, life files into AI now. If the AI captures enough of your voice recording, they can completely mimic your voice. Enough of your memories, they can completely redo all the memories of that person. So that's through their artificial intelligence and their technologies. But your consciousness of your soul, no way, doesn't reside within the head, it resides within the heart of insan. So that they cannot replicate, so that that is only one. The one whom has that consciousness, has that soul, then that's encrypted and locked by Allah And they cannot enter into the, the, the heart of that reality. And therefore as a result they negate the heart and they negate any conversation of soul. And everything's about the mind, right? So they're going to fool people and say, we're going to put you into this clone of yours. It's not a clone, it's an organic robot and we're going to put your memories into it. It's not your memories. They're going to take from what you understood into AI and redevelop it as something different. Means all these sort of satanic technologies come out to try to fool people. But the soul is in Allah's hands and that which is important to the soul is burnt into the reality of its soul, of its understanding. The events that take place in this life <coughs> of the past and, and past experiences, we ask Allah in meditation that grant me a, 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 to forgive that person that has transgressed me. And that was always the du'a that Prophet told Sayyidina Umar, this, this companion is very holy. And I think that the, the hadith was Sayyidina Umar wanted to find out why is this individual so holy. So he accompanied him for a few days, allowed him to sleep at his home for a few days and at the end he said, okay I mean a few days is over, I'm looking at everything you do, it's everything that I do, I don't know why it was the emphasis that you're so holy because <laughs> they're very competitive in their religion. And he basically said, oh, Umar that I have a du'a I make every night and anyone who's wronged me I forgive them and anyone whom I have wronged, I ask Allah, because I forgive people, please also make people to forgive me so that I'm forgiven for my wrongs. So it means that has a, a, a great reality in taking off the rope from behind that shaitan blocks us. All past events forgive people, doesn't mean you forget it. And then we said many times before, we don't want to hang out with those people, just forgive them. Forgive them so they don't occupy space within your heart and your head. As a result of forgiving people and living a life of forgiveness, Ya Rabbi I forgive them, I forgive them, not I'm going to hold them and I'm going to deal with them on judgment day because then Allah said, judge, judge not for you should be judged. If you're going to be like that then everyone who wants to hold you till judgment day I'm going to allow it. But when we live a life of forgiveness then Allah will inspire the other servant that, oh forgive this servant if they did something wrong. So this is the way in which that we come against shaitan who makes a rope on our neck, this is the, the rope behind us is about the past. Release the past and forget the past and forgive the past, it has no, no benefit and cannot be rewritten. The one whom cuts the past then can now fly and reach towards their realities.
Then they begin to cut the future that, why are you apprehensive, why are you so worried about the future? And then they train on how not to think about the future and do good today, live in the present energy. Then you can fly. If you're using all your energy for past and then the rest of your all your energy for worrying of the future, you burn that day. So that was a wasted day that Allah gave to you. But when they forgot all the past, they stopped thinking of the future, that day they meditate and everything is great. And in that day they meditate, maybe Allah takes them to Divinely Presence, well that was the whole bounty. And that's what shaitan wants to block the person, no, no, spend today to think about everything that was done in the past wrong. And that's why Prophet described anyone whom you know opens up something from the past, the fitna is like stepping on, on waste, you just spread the fitna for no reason. Let it to be gone and behind you and then the future is not in your hands and then no future is in anyone's hands and leave it for Allah But if you live with present day and meditate that day, connect your heart that day, make your salat that day. If that day is powerful that then can bring many blessings for the next day and the next day and the next day. And then they train on how to live their day for that day to be powerful. And that's all they need, they go from one power to the next power, next blessing to the next blessing. But shaitan wants us to be busy, use all your energy for, for the past and future and never for just enjoying this day, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa If we have a big ego, is it best to keep our spiritual practice and training completely hidden and just focus on being friendly to people and fulfilling the charitable actions outside? And if anyone asks, refer them to the shaykh, inshaAllah. Yeah, sure. This is, even if you, you don't have to have a big ego because then everyone will say, oh I don't have a big ego so I don't have to do that. But that's the whole discipline of tariqah is so that you won't have a big ego. So it's not only people who have big egos, it's, it's so that you won't have a big ego, don't do your worshipness in front of people. Don't let people think that you know there's something extraordinary about you and everything is always hidden. They act like normal people, do their worshipness, they go out and take care of people, do kind deeds, good deeds, be of service. And alhamdulillah and everything else is hidden. When they pray at home it's hidden and that's the time in which they can make their connection, make their meditation, make their salawats and their practices. Those are the times that are important for the believer inshaAllah, never in front of people. And try your best to go out and be prosperous and, and uh, to do good things and, and then to be of service. InshaAllah, Allah address everyone, bless everyone and, and forgive me inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.